What's good, everybody? My name is Mr. Peters. Today's video, we're going to focus on an Algeron review. So we're going to be looking over seven different topics. And in our first problem, what we need to understand is that we're focusing on two things, perimeter and the fact that perimeter is going to be 300 feet. So when I'm looking at this first problem, I'm just going to put that this is equal to 300 feet in the middle. And then we should always know that perimeter is basically adding up all sides, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to fill in the opposite sides because I know that they are equal to each other, right? So we have x plus 75 on the bottom, x plus 45 on the right-hand side. Now, what we need to understand is that perimeter, once we add all four of these sides, it's going to equal to 300. And we have to create an equation to set up so that we can solve for x. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this out and we'll have x plus 75, x plus 75, plus x plus 45, and plus x plus 45. And like we said, oops, wrote 54. This is all going to be equal to 300. So now once we, once we combine our like terms, right, we'll have 4x plus 240 is equal to 300. Add all our x's together, add all our numbers with no variable together. Now we're going to solve for the x. So we'll subtract 240 from itself and on the opposite side of the equation from its like term. 4x comes down and now 4x is equal to 60. And for us to figure out exactly what x is now, we're going to divide both sides by 4 and we'll get x is equal to 15 feet. So that means on each side, Right, we're going to add that 15 plus 45 or that 15 plus 75. All right, so now we're going to go over to problem number two. And problem number two now is talking about surface area of a cylinder. And when we look at this problem right here, it's telling us that surface area is equal to 2 times pi times r, and then in parentheses, h plus r, right? And they tell us that R is equal to 3 centimeters and H is equal to 4 centimeters. So with this typical problem, we're lucky because they do not want us to change pi, that pi symbol to 3.14. We're going to keep it the same. So when we're doing this now, right, let's start plugging in numbers. So when we start solving for this problem here, right, we know surface area is equal to 2 times pi. Now we're going to replace r with 3, right? And then we're going to put in parentheses 4 plus 3. So remember now, pi is going to stay the same. We're going to start, we're going to start in the parentheses. We have Surface area is equal to 6 pi, right? I multiply 2 times 3. And then now we have 7 inside the parentheses. And before we get to the next step, I want you guys to understand that our final answer is going to be centimeters, right? Centimeters times centimeters is going to give us centimeters squared. So when you see that squared term, just understand what I'm highlighting right now. That is how we got centimeters squared, okay? So now, all we have to do to get the surface area, right? We're going to do S of A is now equal to 42 pi. And we could leave our answer like that. But if your teacher wants you to talk, leave it and have the units included, right? We would just have 42 pi centimeters squared as an answer. OK. All right. So in our next problem for the algebra review, we're going to be talking about rearranging formulas. So the equation right here 
is for volume. Volume is equal to, and it's volume of a pyramid, I should say, one third base times height. And now what they now what they're asking us to do is to solve for h. So they want us to rearrange this equation for it to say h is equal to, right? So we're getting h by itself, kind of like how v is right now. So to do this, it's very similar to solving equations. We are going to use inverse operations, right? Those opposite operations and work backwards. So if I want to get h by itself, the first thing I'm going to do, right, I'm going to get rid of my fraction. And to get rid of a fraction, guys, we all remember we're going to multiply by the denominator. So when I multiply by 3 over 1, and actually let's put this in a, let's rewrite this so we have some more space. So V is equal to 1 over 3 base times height, right? And when I multiply by 3, right, those 3s are going to cancel out, and I'll go on the opposite side and multiply 3 by V. So when I get rid of my fraction, I'll have 3 times V is equal to B times H. So remember that B and H, are they're being multiplied together. So if I want to cancel that B out to get H by itself, I have to do the opposite of multiplication. So I'm going to divide by B. And our final answer is what I'm boxing off. H is equal to 3 times V divided by B. So rearranging formulas, guys, just remember that it's the same steps that we would take when we're solving an equation. It's just there's probably going to be a lack of coefficients, right, and constants. All right. so. The very next one is a is going to be an inequality for a graph, and we have a separate video for this that will be coming out soon. So if you need help with uh, inequalities and matching their graphs, please make sure you check that video out. First thing we need to know is when we see that the line on the graph is dashed, like this one is below, we have to automatically eliminate f and g. And the reason why we eliminate F and G is because those graphs, when it has the or equal to inequality symbol, that means that the line is going to be solid. So I already know that those two answers based on the line is going to be wrong. So now the second thing is, hey, is the inequality sign going to be greater than or less than? So to save time in this video, we should know that because we're shading above that line, our answer should be H. And normally I tell students to plug in a point and determine if it, if it works. So let's say we had the point 0, 4, right? So that means I go in, I put, uh, let's see, let's write the coordinate, right? We have 0, 4, and we substitute it. So we're saying 4 is greater than 3 over 2 times 0 plus 2. And when we look, we would say that 4 is greater than 2. So that's just a quick way to check that problem off. Like I said, we have a video on inequalities, matching them with their graph, coming up in the upcoming weeks. So please be on the lookout for that. All right, in our next problem, we're talking about simplifying radicals that have variables and exponents. So when we are simplifying radicals, just remember we are basically dividing using perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, those numbers. And when we start off with the uh, number, right, this one we're going to do 36 times 2. And what I tell my students is, right, to we, we divide with the, with the largest perfect square, and then when we're talking about the variables, n to the third, right, in this problem, understand that the root is 2. So whatever our exponent is, we want to divide it by 2, and whatever the remainder is, we'll kick it out to the side. 
And this is what I mean. So when we look at n to the third power, right? The highest even number is two. So I'm going to take that two and put it with the perfect square, right? Just because we could divide two by two. And then I'm going to keep the other one, that leftover, with the imperfect square. So now what happens is we take the square root of 36, and this turns into 6, right? And then when we're looking at n squared, we're going to divide it by the root, right? Divide by its root, and you should know the root is 2. So when we divide by 2, all we're left with is just n, right? So this turns out to be 6n radical 2n. We can't break down radical 2n anymore, so we just leave it as is under the radical. Okay. All right, and let's go to our next problem. So what I actually want to do is let's, let's skip number 6. We're going to go to number 7 so that we can kind of understand how to break apart or simplify the variables and those high exponents. So when we're looking at number 6, Seven right now, I'm sorry, almost got lost, right? Same thing applies. So we have 180 x to the ninth, y to the 16th. And let's see, what is the highest perfect square that goes into this? Let's see. Let's try 36 times 5. You know what? No. So when we're looking at this problem here, we're going to start off by breaking down 180. So 180 could break down to 36 multiplied by 5. Now, let's just put x and let's put y, right? Now, the highest even exponent or the highest even number before we get to 9 is going to be 8. So we're going to put x to the eighth power with the perfect square and that leftover x we're going to put with the imperfect square radical five. Now luckily for us as we look at the variable y to the 16th we have an even number so we're just going to keep that variable and exponent with the perfect square because we can divide evenly by two. All right. So now we're going to break this down, and we know that 36 is going to turn into 6, its square root. And then when we divide 8 by 2, we're going to get x to the fourth power. And when we divide 16 by 2, right, we're dividing by the root, we're going to get y to the eighth. Now, radical 5x, we can't break that down anymore, guys. So what we need to do now bring it down, and this will be our final answer. All right? And we're going to look at just one more problem to wrap this on up, and we're going to be reviewing properties of exponents. So let's write this problem out. We have negative 2. All right, so we wrote this problem out, and we have an exponent on the outside. So just don't get confused with squaring 2 and then multiplying your exponents, okay? So this is going to turn into our fraction, right? We'll have negative 2 squared, which gives us 4. m to the second power now turns to m to the fourth power. And then n to the third power now changes into n to the sixth. So we took care of our numerator, that top part of the fraction. Now let's work on down to the bottom. So we have m to the fourth, and we have n to the eighth. So now what we need to do, guys, we're still using properties of exponents. When we're in the fraction, that means we're going to be subtracting our exponents. So m to the fourth minus m to the fourth, right? 
So let's say we start simplifying. We should already know that m to the zero power is equal to one, right? Anything to the zero power is equal to one, so we don't need to put m there, right? So that cancels out itself. So let's just cancel this out. And then when we do six minus eight, we're gonna get four n to the negative two power. But we know that our negative, our exponents cannot be negative. So what we need to do is we're gonna turn this into a fraction, right? So I box it off, I turned it into a fraction, and now only n, only n to the negative two is gonna go down to the bottom. We do not need to move four, it's gonna stay where it's at. So our final answer would be four over n to the second power. So thank you guys for joining us today with our Algebra One review. If you found this video helpful, we ask that you smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and join us next time when we talk about how to find area and perimeter of a shape. Thank you guys so much for joining us.